All right, what's going on guys? Welcome back. Today we're gonna to be doing another carbon fiber project. But today, I'm gonna to be making uh, this here parts. There's three of them. And you're probably wondering what these parts go to. Not the floor, that's for sure. Anyway, so these new parts that we are making today actually go to my gaming chair. That's right, I'm gonna be making the carbon fiber attachment pieces um, for my gaming chair. I'll go ahead and insert some photos of that here. Now, as you can see, it's just regular plastic, ABS plastic. We're just gonna use these as our mold. We are not going to be doing a skin. This is gonna be a complete carbon fiber part like the previous two parts that we made before. If you haven't checked those out, feel free to go ahead and check those out right here. This is gonna be my first taste of the carbon fiber, but after watching those other two videos, I'm really excited to try and get my hands on it. So I told Devon that I wanted to check this out. So this is the carbon fiber roll. Now this is gonna be a 3K 2x2 twill wave. Um, the most common that you're gonna see, especially for visual eliminations. So when dealing with carbon fiber, you definitely wanna be careful. As you can see, it's very fibrous. Uh, the big problem with that is you can ruin the finish of your part. And as you know, fibers aren't good to inhale, but we'll be all right. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out. Ooh, pretty. Yeah, it looks really nice. And we're gonna unroll it. Oh, that's, that's not bad, that's like, so, what, four by one? It's a pretty good size. We're gonna go ahead and, uh, I'm gonna lay this out flat here. Now you definitely want to make sure your surface is clean, as clean as can be. It looks like snakeskin. It does. It looks and it kind of feels like snakeskin. Since this is a thin, small part, um, it's already kind of flexible, as you can see. I didn't bring my parts that I made, but this feels like when I just did one layer. So I'm probably just going to do one layer. Um, it's a visual part, not really structural at all, so one should be fine. I'm going to take this off. kind of got pulled in one direction. Yeah, you can sort of see a stretch in it. Yeah. Like a wave almost. Yeah, exactly. So this is the bowl that I made previously for those who haven't seen it. It's actually magnetic. Uh, terrible. There you go. This is a like an engine side piece for an MR2. Um, don't mind the scratches. I was in the process of wet sanding it before I decided to not go through with it. Yeah. Okay, next I'm gonna clean these parts up before we apply the PVA. I'm just using a basic cleaning solution. Um, if just vinegar and alcohol, you can use whatever you wanna use. Just make sure it leaves no residue. Next step is to take your PVA, your mold release agent or your polyvinyl alcohol, and you apply a couple drops to a dry cloth. Um, it would be best to use a microfiber towel if you have one. Coat it evenly, coat it evenly, coat it evenly. You're gonna let it dry for about 25 minutes until it dries to a haze or you can't see it anymore. And you need like a little light haze. And then you can apply the next coat. We're gonna do about three coats of PVA to make sure the parts come off easy and we have no sticking problems. Okay, so it's been 20 minutes. We're gonna go ahead and apply the second coat of PVA. All right, and the time has come. We're now gonna go ahead and put down the first, well, we're gonna mix up the resin. We're gonna put down our first coats on all three parts. And then we're gonna let that sit, get tacky. We'll come back, put our carbon fiber down, and go from there. You're mixing it up, it's gonna be two to one. So two to one of the resin, one of the hardener. Okay. Like an ounce. Yeah, so it's like it. I have a scale this time, so I'm eyeballing it. Should I mix it up with this? Uh, yeah. Okay, so now we're ready to apply. Ben's gonna go ahead and get the first coat on that first part right there. Got my paintbrush, or my resin brush in this case. More like a dabbing motion at first to get it on. And then once you get it on, you can kind of smooth it out with the brush.
Wrap up the brush with the plastic again and then put it in the fridge and that'll just slow down the time it dries so you can reuse the brush again. A few moments later. Came back downstairs to start this process. I didn't realize the microphone never got turned back on. Anyway, not much information was conveyed while talking, but I learned from doing this that it's really not best to use your hands. Maybe in the case if you're going to be using uh, multiple layers, so the first layer is going to be more of a structural base and you won't really see it. That way it would be okay to go ahead and work it with your hands to get it in your place. And then the remaining layers you would work appropriately with the correct tools to make sure that there are no... Um, wrinkles or obstructions or anything like that that may be caused by the hands. Um, for this part, it would have been most beneficial to build a mold out of these parts and then make the part. Okay, so it's been sitting here curing for about two hours now, the first coat. I'm gonna go ahead and just start working it a little bit more and see if we can get it uh, closer to the final shape. We went ahead and laid out all three parts and now it's just gonna be getting it closer to the final shape. Of course, You'd really want to do this one at a time. Um, I just did this all at once since I had been here working with me earlier and he really wanted to try his hand at it. Now here's another part that I'm not really sure what I was thinking or if I was thinking. Um, as we know I've already made a couple parts before and neither of those parts did I think it was okay to go ahead and manhandle it as I'm trying to uh, apply the resin so not really sure what was going through my head at this point but uh, this is another point at where I made a huge mistake you definitely do not want to move the part as you're trying to coat the epoxy uh, laminate the material whatever you want to call it and uh, you definitely want to have more of a stationary jig or mold setup so I just wanted to share that with you guys I still wanted to share this video because it's still a huge learning experience and uh, we can both learn from it day two it's been about 12 hours um, I stopped at about 11 o'clock last night it's 12 o'clock the next day it's still a little wet I touched it twice in what I thought was you know inconspicuous areas it seemed dry there so I was like okay I went and touched it lightly on the top and it smudged so it's still wet it's been about steady 50 degrees all night and all day, so it's going to take a bit longer for it to dry. Um, since it has those smudges and there are some pinholes, I am thinking to go ahead and mix up another little batch of resin and give it another final coat to clean that up and then let it, uh, let it uh, cure for the rest of the time. So I don't know if it's going to pick it up right now, but you can see there's a little dry spot right here. It's like a small pinhole right there, and then there's another one over here that I want to get up but the smudges I made um, there's one right here it's kind of dark and I already unplugged the light but uh, here let me plug it back on Good morning and it's now uh, actually like day two and a half day three technically I started on Sunday it's Tuesday morning so it's been curing for plenty of time it still feels like it's not completely dry how that could be because of the cold like i said it's been like a steady 50 degrees pretty much every day today it's going to be a bit warmer maybe like 65 i think i'm um, sun's out so that's nice i'm wondering if the issue that i'm running into right now is less of a cure time and more of say a uh, hardener to epoxy ratio not only the ratio but also the um the age because uh the last layers i ran out of the newer epoxy or actually the newer hardener that I got with the newest kit and I used the oldest one that I got from the kit I got previously and I don't really know how compatible they are I don't know if it's the same manufacturer for the chemicals or whatnot so that in itself right there could be my problem of mixing uh, two different chemicals two different sources yeah this is not the best wet layup I've done I've done two more prior and I'm honestly happier with the first two than these last three but this is all learning efforts. We're doing this to learn together. I'm showing you, you know, what's going to happen when you make mistakes and what happens when you don't make mistakes. So, uh, take it all in. So, with this one, um, like I said, I wanted to try something more complex. That was the main point for doing these parts. They're a little bit more complex and it's more than one part. And I did plan to put it on the chair once they're done being molded. It's nice in the light. It looks great from a distance, but up close you see all the imperfections. Moving forward, how can I fix this part? Well, if I wanted to save it, um, I'd probably have to mix up a fresh batch of epoxy, apply another coat of resin, 
and from there I hope it cures fully um, and then sand down any imperfections that we may see from there trim it out and we'll have our part so stay tuned there may be a part two for these but we're not done yet